Oh, no. Alrighty then. <sighs> Chapter 6 of the Key to Time series and its conclusion. The Armageddon Factor. With, well, with the last episode, which was interestingly enough because, see, this one saw the departure of Mary Tam, Anthony Reed, the script editor, and also went with him temporarily was John Leeson, who did the voice of K-9. I'm beginning to wonder for a while there, if it weren't for Lala Ward, you know, Tom Baker would be standing at the beginning of the next season saying, I'm so lonely. So, oh, wow. oh, man. Okay, but let's go around and get hey there, hi there, ho there, some everyone. Let's start with Matt. Hello. And William. Hey now. Mio. Hello. David Aston. Hello. Peace, brother. Peace. <laughs> Callan. Hi there. Philip. Good evening. Texas Tim. Hello there. Elijah. Hey. Okay, so the Armageddon factor, yeah, it ties up the whole thing. And it's kind of, when you watch it, it's kind of like a Cold War setting. You have, you know, the bomb, except in this case, literally being dropped. And then, you know, you got these two planets, these two opposing factions, and they, you find out no one's even really seen one another in how many years. Oh, man. But let's go around. I'm going to get opening thoughts from everybody. Let's start with... Let's start with William. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we start off. Yeah, it was a two wars that was that was weird because like you said, nobody saw each other. It's not a bad story, but it was a little long because there was six parters and it, it could have been condensed to maybe four to five. Um it was it was sad to see that it was this was Mary Tam's last story. I would have loved to have seen her return for a couple of more stories on, on TV, even though she came back on Big Finish. Uh, um, it, it makes it, it's, it's it's good to see um John Lee's and um K nine be the last one to diss the doctor, but calling by saying that he his irrationality is by his 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 insanity. But it's a good it's a great it's a good story. Hopefully, you know, uh, um, hopefully um as a whole six part story, you can see it, the the how the how it changes during the time like why Mary Tam left. Yeah, at least in this one, she didn't really have any attacks of the dumbass. You know, she she was pretty intelligent throughout this one. But as she said, you know, she just didn't see the character going anywhere. Okay, Neo, uh, opening thoughts. I liked it. it, it well, I liked it up to a point. The more I watched it, the more the rating went down. Not a fan of Lala Ward. I don't care what form she's in. And like, just, just, she's one of those people that they really do not need to scream. That's all I can really say for an opening thought right now. Okay. Next up, David Aston. Uh, so this is the final episode story of Key to Time. It, you know, wraps things up, or rather, it doesn't. Um, six parts it can work if it's got the right sort of plot but I was sort of get put, put off by six parters and this didn't drag too much there's some funny lines in it you know there's the whole bit where the marshal you know there's a lot of uh, it's like um, it's like all those documentaries about war you know second world war and um, cold war uh, you got, you know, films at the start. Yeah, the film at the start where it's like a propaganda type thing. And they look like a piss take of, you know, the Second World War movies, you know, Brief Encounter or something like that. And, you know, there's the whole point that it's a fabricated one, you know, war, fabricated war, which is in itself all part of a Machiavellian manipulation by the Black Guardian. And the one that you think uh, is the main baddie is actually merely a servant, the shadow. And then there's Drax, who's a time lord. Uh, and actually one of the few examples of a 
Time Lord, neither, you know, uh, evil renegade or a pompous wanker like the ones on Gallifrey. Uh, he's actually more like the Doctor. And it's a shame we don't see him again. You do see Drax mentioning new Virgin New Adventures, etc. But to be terribly honest, I think this story is a bit of a mess in some places. It's like too many ideas trying to compete with each other type thing. Um, interestingly enough, I'm not, I wasn't really that familiar with the story. So I was rather surprised by how very little you see of the Black Guardian. I mean, he literally appears at the very end, trying to impersonate the White Guardian. Uh, Lara Ward is okay as Princess Astra. But really, in some respects, this story is canine sort of taking the spotlight. You know, first he's caught in this sort of conveyor belt thing. Then he communicates with the thing, the machine, the computer that's basically faking the other side of the war. Uh, and, you know, he's got so much to do in this. He's even taken over by, you know, the shadow himself. But the conclusion to this story and the whole thing is an anticlimax. It really is. It's almost like a second foot. There's hardly any exit for Romana 1 at all. And it literally just stops. You know, it just ends on a traditional fourth doctor line and smile. Uh, it's just a bit weird because I'd seen Mordred Undead and you know the uh, 1983 trilogy with the Black Guardian where he appears way more. But with this, it's literally Valentine Dial, a brilliant actor, appearing very briefly. His next appearance would be Slip Back after, you know, 20th anniversary thing. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's good for passing the time. The line where he goes, Doctor, you shall die for this, is a brilliant moment. And they're, yeah, to their credit, the Black Guardian's uh, threat does actually continue, which is why they introduced a randomizer. So by the time of Peter Davison's second season, he's still a danger to the Doctor. You know, like one of those foes watching in the background, waiting to strike, which just happens to coincide with an anniversary and a script editing uh, meeting. Uh, but I'm afraid this story, apart from being a sort of piss take of uh, war and... It's a fake war. It's like a sort of false flag, Alex Jones type war, which isn't genuine. It's all part of a... It's a plot within a plot, if you like. So it gives you the impression that the Black Guardian has entire things going on for thousands of years. Like the, the Shadow says, he could wait another thousand years if he has to. You know, that's just like the Ephemerals, they can wait for eternity. They're you know, planning all sorts of things that you never thought were plans or a means to them. But as a story, I'm afraid this is a bit of an insult to the viewers because there's no real payback it just sort of stops yeah but uh the black guardian does sort of give it some sort of ending but uh this after six stories it's bit bit of a shame that they just ended it on a whimper and it's you know uh mary tam's last appearance and that's it that was her last scene at the very end, yeah, it's, uh, so I'd give it mm, seven and a half. It's a bit odd. It's it's not. Well, uh, it's, it's an anticlimax. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think they anticipated that Mary Tam was going to leave. You see, she, uh, but you know, she decided. You know, she, the character is not going anywhere. She didn't like the way she was written towards the last part of the series, and then. As I said in the last podcast, when everyone asked her, why didn't you come back and do a regeneration scene, she quite honestly answers, they never asked me to. So, 
you know, you can see where, you know, the VVC's importance was on that particular thing. Okay, Matt, are you with us? I guess not. Okay, moving on. Callan. Yeah. Man, uh, I'm again factor. Lost to the key to time. Uh, yeah, quite a good story. Uh, quite enjoyed it. Uh, uh, William Squires plays the shadow. Who was uh, it was David Collins' boss in a uh, in a TV program called Colin. Colin. Where have I heard that name before? Anyway, uh, yeah, that'll do for me just now. Right, next up, Philip. Out of all the Keith of Time stories, episodes that we reviewed, this one is one I wouldn't really rush back to watch very soon. Because for me, it's, it's an over-padded adventure, and it does detract, it does take away my enjoyment of it, because I, I get easily just easily bored by it. And, um, okay, not a bad, it's not a bad premise story, but it's just too long, there's a lot going on, and it just goes, it's, there's too much chewing and throwing, and not, a, not much of a, um, you know, not much of an action going on with it. So for me, it's, it's not really one of my favorite stories, to be honest. All righty then. But yeah, it, it did go on a bit long. I, I can agree with you on that one. It, it was just, I think they could have really wrapped this one up in like four chapters like the other ones. I don't, I don't see why they drug it out. Okay, next up, Elijah. Okay, so before I actually watched this episode, I had purchased the uh, Armageddon Factor Target novelization online. And I read it and I thought, wow, there was a lot that Canine actually did in this book, and I was like, I have to see this episode. And it's nice that Canine got to actually do a lot more than just, you know, be there just to be there as a companion. He actually had a job to do, and I thought that was nice. Um, second time actually watching this episode, um, I enjoyed it. Um, I have a question for you guys who actually watched it when it aired. Um, was a surprise to you? when uh you saw the second romano was that like a big surprise to you guys who actually watched it what do you mean going into destiny of dalek do you mean yeah when you saw the second romano was that a surprise yeah it was well, yeah yeah it, yeah it yeah, was it was but we wasn't expecting her um uh Mary I mean, Town. to happen and i don't understand uh what caused the regeneration in the first place I mean, you know, I understand maybe she was injured and, and like that. I think it, um, never, it never mentioned it. I think in one of the big finished stories, they do go into why she regenerated at that time. I think it's to do with um, Gallifrey series, I think. No, there was an explanation in the Gallifrey series, and there was also another explanation given in the Chaos Pool. So it, it's Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, you're right. Correct. Yeah, that was, that's why when uh, the Dalek story came out and it was a lot of war playing her, I was like, Wow, that was a little bit shocker. I mean, even though we know it's Romana, like, wow, there's nothing to that led to her to, to regenerate. All I know, it was kind of weird for me, you know, when I was first watching it, you know, when I first saw it here, you know, when it aired in America. Um, you know, because one second I'm like, wait a minute, what, 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 what's she doing there? What? what? <laughs> and then, you know, you find out, yeah, this is Romana, and for some reason, yeah, she's changed body. And, of course, they had that nifty little scene at the beginning of Destiny of the Daleks that follows this one where she's, quote-unquote, choosing bodies, which kind of kind of threw a clunker into the whole, wait a minute, how's the regeneration really work thing? And that's been a big argument ever since amongst Who fans as to why that went down. But, oh, you know, it's, like I said, it was a big surprise to me. Okay, anything else you want to add, Elijah? Or? Okay, let's move on. Texas Tim. <clears throat> Well, I kind of agree with everybody. It is a bit long. I enjoyed it back in the day when I saw it at the end of the season, but um, watching it back, it's it's it is a bit long, and um, I don't think a lot of the dialogue is that well written. It, some of it just seems kind of silly, but for the most part, it's a good story. Uh, I do like the the moral dilemma they face when you know the, the fact that the final segment of the key is an actual person. So, do they actually kill that, that person by using it for whatever reason? would the guardian do that or not, you know, or would the doctor fa facilitate that, you know? So that's, that's pretty cool, cool ideas. It, like David said, it's got a lot of good ideas, but they're all trying to get it 
attention. It, maybe it just doesn't add up that, or maybe it's just too long. But I mean, it's it's kind of mediocre as a as a finale to such a long uh, build up. But it's not entirely bad though. It is watchable. It's just you know. By today's standards, it's a little bit long. Favorite, I think, out of the whole thing was Stones of Blood. Uh, that, or either that or Pirate Planet. It'd be a close tie between those two for me. Um, yeah, because I, I really love those two stories. And it seemed like to me, yeah, Android's a tar, not bad. But then, you know, Power of Coal just got silly in a few places. And then <laughs> this got really long and drawn out. Like, it's, is it going to end? And then, as, as y'all said, it, it was a bit anticlimactic in the ending. <laughs> Moving onward, um, also in this serial, we got it. We there's a bunch of very interesting areas. You got the all the typical military minds. You got the marshal running around. Oh, I'm gonna blow them. Uh, I'm gonna blow them up. Uh, I'm gonna get a, a final victory. Yeah. Meanwhile, your planet's being decimated around you, genius. And it's like, it's like, come on, you're already living. You know how many meters under the planet? All right, but let's go ahead and open up the. Uh, I'm gonna open up this one to everybody. Uh, how many, you know, were pretty weirded out when you had this guy named Drax who suddenly pops up out of a hole, literally, and he looks at the doctor and goes, hello, Thee. Like, wait a minute. Did he just break the sacred rule and give a name to the main character? <laughs> I don't know. What's everybody's opinion on the whole Theta Sigma thing? Do you really think it's the doctor's real name or as they backpedaled later on and tried to turn it into a college nickname, what's your take on it? Who wants to hop on it? I, th I think it's a college nickname. It sounds like one, for one thing. Uh, and um, I think that was just them trying to throw something in there to, to, to get people to talk about maybe if he had a name or not. So it works for me. And Drax is a Drax is a great character. So. <laughs> oh yeah, he's a funny guy. Uh, what do you want to add, Callum? Oh yeah, um, yeah. According to one of the websites, it's just his college nickname, which is, it seems more probable. You wouldn't really want to get a doctor a name. It wouldn't be a very clever idea. I think if they're all these years, that would be that wouldn't be very clever. Well, look at how it got people talking in 2013 when they implied that that may be what they might reveal at some point, and pe that's all people talked about for months. So yeah. it, it does work. It gets people talking. <clears throat> I thought it was the Gallifrey version of the, because T is, t is spelled T-H-E-T-E, -E, and I thought, maybe you should call him the, the doctor. Hello, the. <laughs> it's talking about, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the I did, I, but I did like that Drax is brilliant. I wish they, I, 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 like um, what David said, they should have brought him back at some point because he was a good character. He's an interesting character. Drax. The way he said it with his accent was feet, like F. He's like, hey, what's up, feet? <laughs> which I'm not sure which part of the, the country that, that's where they do that with the F and the TH, but yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but, but he does say that when, when, when they meet each other that he's from college. That's why you always hear that name. So to me, you know, that was his nickname. I, I, I always thought of it as that, not as his actual name. Another question is, do Time Lords recognize each other, even if they've regenerated? Because when they were in college, he would have been a different doctor. So. Exactly. But yeah, he probably would have been a younger version of Hardnell at that point, wouldn't he? Or yeah. somebody, yeah. They certainly seem to recognize each other. Um, sometimes they don't, like... Uh, the, the twin dilemma when they don't when the doctor or the mentor doesn't recognize him and he used to say surely you recognize me with the twin hearts you beat as one i think it's probably something similar to sith lords you know being able to mask that they are you know in tune with the dark side so perhaps some time lords you know the master showed an inability to uh, hypnotize people, so perhaps it's possible to, you know, actually project a sort of barrier against being recognized as a time lord. But they must, they must have that ability to recognize each other because after all, they're a race of people that change their bodies every now and then. So they, there must be something in the genetic or the genetic odor, just to, so you can sense who, who's who, basically. Maybe they can just recognize that they time lords, but um, because yeah, like like Drax knew that who he who the doctor was. But like like you said, Philip, uh, the doctor didn't recognize who Missy was. Uh-oh, wrong guy with the bird on his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, Drax, I was just thinking about it, actually. Uh, in um, 
name of the doctor at the very beginning they're in the workshops of Gallifrey where that one says who would be which idiot would you know, try and nick a TARDIS I think that you know, Drax is saying that he's men stuff that's his main skill that's he worked in you know workshop working on TARDISes on Gallifrey William you said about uh, the doctor not recognizing uh, Missy maybe because Missy's body is not a time loss body it's a body snatch and it's not a Gallifrey body that's why he didn't recognize Miss, Missy inside it well, that's the thing because remember when uh, when uh, we last saw the male master, he was heading back to Gallifrey with also, you know, that. so who else well, body he's going to jump into but other time lords? But we don't know if we're seeing the master in order. Also, we have to figure out that the doctor has been in positions where he hasn't been able to recognize the master right up front. At, you know, also before think of him, you know, where he pops up in the skies. Why doesn't he instantly recognize him then? Such as an enlightenment, or sorry, not enlightenment, but I mean, uh, King's Demons, mm -hmm. uh, just to name one, where you know he's dressed, you know, or you know, made up to look like you know what's his name, that that jerk off French knight, and he doesn't recognize him right off the bat till he changes. Or so in time shite. Took the key. Yeah, or maybe the master has a way of camouflaging himself, but then again, that would throw out the whole thing going on and, you know, last of the night. He was a ginger as well, wasn't he? He was a ginger French knight. Yeah. That's, that's even just creepier contemplating it. The, the ginger French knight was called Sir Giles, Sir Giles Estram. Yeah, Estram. That's right, yeah. Estram. It's kind of bad. You know, he always shows up and then he you know, uses an anagram of his name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But also, the shadow was a villain. Didn't he just seem like a total dummy? It was like, He's a little over the top. Yeah, he wasn't really even threatening. It's like it's just a big guy with a skull on his head. And it's not like he really did anything remarkably brilliant. It seemed like the doctor had him outwitted. He tried sticking the control device on the doctor, and he's like, you are now under my power. Oh, oh, oh because of this thing. <laughs> it's like, come on. Yeah, he should have known. He should have known that male. Yeah, the doc. Uh, sorry, you know. Yeah, he had. To, he had to use the servant to go get the the keys of time because it was the light from the tunnel was hurting him. Uh, that was stupid. Yeah, he, had, he, he did like laughing a lot. Well, I think they. I think they just created that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm saying you could have borrowed Leo when he knew his glasses to get into the tower. This have been. Give him a shot. Yeah, I think they just made that character so they could save the Black Guardian for the end, you know, in a way. Whereas if, if it had just been the Guardian they were up against, it would have been maybe more interesting. Yeah. But, but thought, the, go ahead. Go ahead. I thought it was the Black Guardian, actually, until he started doing all that monologuing crap. And I said, never mind, this can't be the Black Guardian guy. I <laughs> thought it was him. They were fighting. I find it interesting at the beginning of the whole key to time theory, you've got the white guard you, we, we meet the white guard yet the black guard is able to uh, take on his form so who, So it would have been interesting just to think that at the beginning the white guard was not the white guard but the black guard if you know what I mean yeah, shit. well it's po possible that he was mimicking the white no that doesn't make any sense no, no. he should have used the same actor at the end of the key to time series and then he should have transmogrified into Valentine Dial as the Black Guardian. But yeah, that might have worked better. Too much money. You know how it is. It, it would make more sense for the Black Guardian to not only have the Shadow trying to find the segments, but also the Doctor. Because that way he wouldn't lose. We didn't think of that, did we? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it could have been, been interesting if the Black Guardian... Instead of like hiding around, he could have had the master looking for the keys of time pieces himself too. So you at least would have had at least one or two stories with the master in there. Yeah, and the master is just merely a time lord. The white guy, the black guy, would have wiped his wiped his ass any day, man. Remember the master that the master that would have if the master would have been used, he would have been the one that would that just faced the Tom Baker one. So right then, the the, the black guardian could have said, "I could have helped you with." New regeneration. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's a nice idea. Well, he did say in um, season twenty that to tell he he couldn't be seen to be involved. So perhaps that's that's there's one catch to his powers. He's not allowed to be directly involved in altering things. That's why he needs 
you know, acolytes and servants, yeah. But that's that's the same as the White Guardian saying that he can't be seen to be called. Be <laughs> yeah, but the White Guardian chose the Doctor to be his champion, so it's... Yeah, it's, to get uh, lesser beings like Turlo and the Shadow to serve him, and also to grow fetching beards. There was in that rather fetching beards, you know, the Master and the Black Garden. It's, I bet all the villains of the Doctor Who universe get together and compare their beers once a millennium. Yeah. And also, besides Drax being funny, how many people thought the biggest comic relief in this particular serial was Major Shep and that guy Merrick who's running around chasing, you know, Astra. Astra! Astra! <laughs> I like the bit. I like the bit when he, when he, when he, when, he, when um, Astro was walking or carrying him along. He falls on the floor and says, "Help me up, my leg, my leg hurts. Help me up." And when she, when she, um, I, I can't swear. When she bugs off with her two little goons, he he, 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 he automatically gets up and walks through the lift shaft and gets inside it. I thought, "What happened to your leg, mate? You got that, that got that healed quickly." That's, that's, I think that was, that was just a very weak writing on the writer's part to have. So that that's just stretches it out. You know, Merrick was a weak character to begin with. I mean, they should have just, they could have just cut that character and done something different with it, you know? I think there's an influence. There was also, uh, there's, a, I think by that point, they might have been possibly ingesting certain substances. And there's this bit where the one who's serving the marshal, um, he gets shot and he falls over in the most ridiculous way, sort of, says shout something out and it just falls over it's almost beyond comical it's mm -hmm. like how, about, how, about, how about the guy shot when he got shot in the elevator he stood holding on to his gun like this but i think that's what dave was talking about yeah right. shit. oh gosh he, like i said him and merrick were the biggest comic relief besides drax and i thought he died he didn't die <laughs> but it was unintentional comic relief really I know. plus um also another funny thing was the prop they used for the communicators they hung around the neck. They were ballpoint pens. Mm. All they were doing was taking the cap off and <laughs> talking into them like they were going to be like... I used to, I used to have one of those at school, those sort of pens, same ones. I used to have them. And also, one thing where they could have really saved some time, and I'm still trying to figure out why it was even in here, that cheesy cornball soap opera opening they had. <laughs> Oh. Young men are dying for it. Dying for the sport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't go. I was like, what the crap is that? <laughs> I'm like, right there's five minutes of my life I can't get back. It's like... <laughs> but are, are, are political commercials you see nowadays that much different, really? It's the same cheesiness. There's a greater love. It's men out there. Dying, dying with the cause of Atreus. Oh, my God. I think that might be Douglas Adams. That that would fit perfectly into Hitchhiker's rather than Doctor Who. And oh, then that, was, the that was a Douglas Adams script, wasn't it? Uh, the no. thing fell on the people in the oh, hospital. Oh, and they yeah. gave me now, who wrote it was um, Bob ba Baker and Dave, Dave Martin. Martin. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, according to, according to these guys here, Adams did work as a script editor on this one, but it was uncredited. Ah. Yeah. Uh. So there's a possibility, yeah, it was his fault this happened. <laughs> Not one of his more brilliant points. Oh, then we got poor K9 being shipped off into the furnace. Yeah, the that's, furnace. that's my favorite part. My favorite part that is. I like that part. Poor K9. Oh, wait. Was it a computer, a girl, or a boy? Because I honestly thought K9 had a little girlfriend. Oh, hmm. uh, what? Yeah, oh, Michelle. Machine was a girl because K9 was getting all uppity about it. I was like, excuse <laughs> K9 and your girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, do you know what? It could be Neo. Because look, that machine was very scorned and wanted to kill everything. So it could be a girl. There you go. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. I was like, okay, K9, we'll just leave you two alone. Yeah, but I agree with Tim on this one. There, there was just too many things that were thrown at you at once. You, you had the big bad Cold War. Then you had, oh, look, Mentalis, the machine. Oh, it's the rise of the machines. And then you had the love story of Merrick, you know, chasing after Astra everywhere, like a lovesick, you know, school child. And then, oh, it, it just got bizarre from there. But, oh, let, let, let me ask, all right, let's see who wants to jump. All right, 
Was there any other favorite parts of the story that anyone really enjoyed that I've missed? That guy. Oh, the guy that was second to Marshall when he was um, up there with the doctor and they went to that machine. And he was like, "Hmm." yeah, him. He was really cool. He's like, hmm, that's the thing. Well, let's see. And he shot it and he shot him back. And he's like, hmm, yes, uh, some kind of shielding. I was like, dude, you're awesome. (laughs) Indestructible, huh? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I like how he's like, yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> that was cool. I like I, it was weird that the doctor notices that like like Marshall and Astro had the little thing on their on their necks, but when they put it on him, he took it off like it was nothing. I said, why couldn't he do that to the other people then too? There's also another interesting uh, scene, actually. It's very subtle. You might miss it. There's a point where um, the doctor is speaking to the marshal, and he says to the marshal, um, "You, go, uh, I'm going to go and find. Um, I'm going to go and find. Um, no, I'm going to go and find a six. He's, he's about to say six six seven because I'm going to go and find Astra. But it's like he, it's like he already knew that Astra was a six seven before everybody else did. Well, I like the way she finds. She, like, well, she's been taken over by the the creepy guy, right? Um, and, but I like how she starts to realize what's happening to her when she tells them uh, it's metamorphosis, you know, I'm changing into something else, you know, mm. like, as if she kind of knows because of, of being hypnotized or something, which nobody would willingly want to do, sacrifice themselves to be the key to time. So that's mm. pretty interesting. My destiny, my destiny's right here. Yep. I'm going to turn into a block. <laughs> Like she almost does. Remember, she reaches out to touch it, and then he pulls her hand back. Like, no, don't touch it. It's hot, you know. <laughs> but the other thing that freaked me out was, all right, hang on. This you can see it right here. Look, key to time spackle. We'll yeah, it was, it, it, it's breaking down already. The fake yeah. one. Yeah, it's the heat. The heat is breaking it down. Yeah, it's like we'll just spackle up a piece and slam it in there. That'll work. Yeah, it's what. <laughs> sad part is it did really work for a little bit yeah. for a little while yeah on this subject though uh, you can see of course you can see the point that when the doctor Ramana and Asta enter the TARDIS Asta could just steal the key to time and escape with the door but being on the, under because she's under the shadow's control but being is the sixth princess of the sixth dynasty of the sixth royal house of Atreus other stronger forces were at work, even. Plus, it's like six, six, six. It well, Yeah, plus it was like six six six. Does that mean she's going to start hanging out with Damien? It's like. Yeah, I, know. Uh, I find it interesting that, oh, as much as God like the um, Guardians are, they can't. What well, they that they don't know where the keys of time is scattered about the universe. They, you would think they would know where it is. <laughs> Being godlike. Uh, yeah, it'd be able to sort of sense it in the ether. Well, yeah. the, well, the white guardian gave that um, sensor to 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 um, monitor the search it. Yeah, that's for the, that's for the humans to use. I mean, they're not godlike, but I bet the guardians already knew where they were. They just needed someone to go and get them. Yeah, yeah. Well, they need someone to go and get them anyway. Once the key to time is broken up, then Asta's back to being Asta. She is no longer the sixth segment of the key to time. The Greg Garley has now hidden those six segments and did six different places. They want to hide them in the same place again. Now, they that's stupid. That'd be a bit too simple. Which is an interesting oh, point because. Asta and, and they keep the time again. They wouldn't do that. Well, they don't. Well, which is interesting you say that, Callum, because obviously Big Finish did a second Key to Time series, and the key the key was scattered about the universe again. But this time it was breaking down in certain certain parts of it, which need to be recollected. Yeah. Oh. I thought it was still back in her again. I was just like, oh, so. Uh. No. If the Mark yeah. Guardian had got under the Key to Time, she would have died. Yeah. If the Mark Guardian got hold of it, she was she was still alive. By, um, but but she's I, no longer a part of the key to time. Well, in, in regard to Big Finish and the, um, the, the, the key to time, the sixth segment, that still retained its image as um, Princess Astra. But in this, in this case, it turned out to be um, Ramana. So, yeah. oh, spoiler alert. No. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. 
Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. That 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 starts out yeah with the fifth doctor, and for some crazy reasons regarding the grace. Yeah, that he has to go looking for the key to time again, and with you know, with the help of Amy and I think it was Zara, and of course Amy who had to have her cha name changed later because. They thought it would be too confusing for viewers having a character in Big Finish named Amy while well, they had one on the main screen named Amy. I'm like, what? But, yeah, it started out with the Judgment of Ishkar, and then it was uh, Destroyer of Delights, and then the third chapter was the Chaos Pool, if I remember correctly. So, but either way, go listen to it. It is a good trilogy. All righty. And we just lost somebody. Elijah, um, I have a question. When uh, when Astro went back to her home world and to continue as her as her, what happened to Marshall? Mm. That's a good question. Well, he was. Well, Drock says he's going to catch up with him and uh, go into business with him, doesn't he? Then the doctor says, "When are you going to do this?" And he says, "Oh, I know it's half an hour." So he's already hid the plan. Drax was ready for action too. So basically, he would have been so he would have been demoted from being a um, military man into some servant man after all the situation finished. Oh, yeah, Drax said the war was over, so there'll be a lot of more, um, a lot of tidying up to do. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Drax is still going to business with the marshal, and you know, get the everything back in spec. You know. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, I forgot about that scene. Yeah, they did. Yeah, he, he told them. Yeah, if we're gonna go, I've negotiated with him. Yeah, you know, we're gonna do the reconstruction, and that's probably gonna tie him up for quite a bit. Considering you know, uh, they're not not all like uh, BJ. Are, are what are you doing? <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. If I pop, keep popping in and then I was just, <laughs> I, I, I was just waiting until you your cast was over. I wasn't sure. I'm sorry. Okay, don't worry. I'll the box when we're done, okay? The uh, secrets uh, have been revealed to you, boy. Because, uh, in fact, I didn't even know that you were doing a cast. Um, I apologize ah. to everyone. This is an but, illusion. It's, we're not really here. Did you and I go to the key no, I'll, I'll, you, uh, I'll, you, I'll let you guys go back to you doing your cast. Sorry. Oh, okay. Don't worry. We're nearly done. All right. Bye. And after that commercial interruption... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, I can't do another hour of Armageddon oh. effect. No, thanks. Oh, uh, yeah, I hope Elijah comes back. <laughs> well, uh, um, well um, Drax never came back in other episodes of Big Finish, did he? No, nah, I don't think so. I don't no, no yeah. but he came, back, he came back in a book that I used to have many yeah. years ago. Yeah, I think the new adventures and the BBC books do refer to... Yeah, Drax and yeah, he, the master in uh, academic days. They, they were all part of them, some sort of trinity, time, uh, yeah. time or trinity, and he was one of them. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, because I was kind of hoping maybe someday he'll pop back up. You, you never know. You know. Even in Big Finish, I'd like to see his character pop back up again, because we've had know. the other characters pop back up in Big Finish. Yeah, but, sure. I'm sure, Merrick or what's his name, Merrick or something. I don't know. What about those two? Did they ever show back up in Big Finish? No. No. <laughs> no why no. would you? Why would I they? I don't think anybody wants to see Merrick again. No, no thanks. <laughs> no. No way. No. Sure, a lot of people do pop back up in Big Finish, but, you know, come on. They don't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you know, we've had returns to various planets and all that, but nobody wants to go back to Atrios. Now it's just a boring hole. They yeah. went back to Alzarius. Uh, you know, to do the misfall, that's the most recent brand new Big Finish audio, which yeah. is like a sequel to Full Circle. Yeah. Very good. Um, Drax, yeah, was played by Barry Jackson, uh, who, by the way, um, he originally appeared in uh, The Romans. Um, if I remember right, he had a part in Mission to the Unknown. Yeah. And mm -hmm. sadly, though, he passed away in 2013. So... If Drax were to reappear, it'd have to be in another incarnation or something like that. Mm. Yeah, I'll be I'll be happy with that as long as they keep the um the Cockney accent. A Cockney Time Lord is pretty cool, actually. <laughs> but once again, they did assemble some really good actors for this one because if you look into the backgrounds, like John Woodvine, oh heck, uh, who played the Marshal, oh heck, he was in like every darn thing. 
Well, he's he's excellent in this as well. Even with some crap dialogue, he's convincing. He's not. He's he's very likable in this, even though he's kind of a bastard. But you get my point, though. He's acted very well, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, unfortunately, yeah, it it was a good idea. And if you go get the DVD set, um, it was originally supposed to. There was an entire whole nother plot line that was you know written for the Armageddon Factor. It, you know, even though it's in a similar setting and whatnot, there was all kinds of changes and whatnot that were done. And if you get the um, key to time box set, you know, you put on the info track, they have little segments of the original plot line that come up as you watch the show. So, but unfortunately, you know, they did the best they could with what they had. Um, also, one other line I did want to mention was all the other ships have been destroyed, Marshall, except for your escape. I mean, your command module. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the Doctor's absolute power speech is one of the best in the hell of the hell series, and uh, perhaps one of the most famous. Who did everyone think of that? Uh, at the end, where they've assembled the whole thing, everyone and everything, every single atom. Oh, that, one where he acts all nuts? Yeah. yeah. That scared me. And even if you were listening, I can make you listen because I possess the key to time. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I hope I hope everyone clocked the new uh, tracer. By the way, yeah, they had to build a new tracer prop because they literally lost it when they were filming the Power of Crawl. So, <laughs> yeah, the Swampies did it. It's not stuck in the remnants of Cole, you know, Crawl's colon or wherever you know, pieces we may lay in, but uh and then when the end of that, that, that story, um, the doctor has a randomizer. Yeah, they introduced the randomizer, which will play a big part in the following series because the doctor is, quote unquote, on the run from the Black Guardian. So. He did that very quickly, strangely enough. One minute he's, he's talking to the Black Guardian, dematerializing the TARDIS. Next minute he's got this randomizer on the console. That was quick. What was the, what was the last story that the randomizer was, was used? Because I'm sure they destroyed it. The Pleasure Hive. Pleasure Hive. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Because he used it to fix the uh, thing for the uh, Tachyon Recreation Generator. Um, However, if Shada had been, or Shada had been broadcast, they, they, they didn't seem to be affected by the randomizer. They went where they wanted to go in that one. Yeah. So I guess he overrides it occasionally. Yeah. Well, so yeah, purely. Yeah, they made note of that in the uh, Fourth Doctor Adventures in the Big Finish, that every now and then he just gets sick of it and he, he bypasses it and goes where he wants to go anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he, his control of the TARDIS is literally random anyway. At least, at least for the first two Doctors, yeah, it was always... <laughs> yeah, but he just keep blowing it up in the planet death, strangely enough. I mean, go somewhere else, Doctor. I get sick of the same planet all the time. <laughs> or as we found out later in the doctor's wife, I've always taken you where you needed to be. So I kind of like the fact they threw that line in later because it you know explains a lot about why this guy who's supposedly be able to navigate this thing, you know, sometimes and then other times that he goes, okay, no, we're going here. <laughs> Yeah, but he got he got better at short hops when he wanted to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was the, like, oh, um, course, yeah. the past two doctors couldn't control it. I don't think. No, well, Susan says they could control it, but it, it happened so quickly they didn't have time to plot where they were lined up. Hmm. Yeah, and also you know you you had various doctors using various excuses even from then on, like even Matt Smith who was blaming the helmet regulator, and I know that's been blamed before and even in the classic series, or a slight a slight slip on the local temporal balance clone, blah blah blah, or some other you know gobbledygook to explain why the TARDIS ain't going where it's going. But that's why the TARDIS talks now, saying you reach your destination. Oh God, don't don't even bring that up, man. <laughs> William, William, how could you say that, William? <gasps> yeah, well, the fourth doctor blamed we, ha- we, have to remember the Tardis, we have to remember the TARDIS is a type 40. That was decommissioned, and it wasn't working properly anyway. So, you know. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's put this sucker to bed. Let's rate this sucker. I was hoping Elijah would pop back in. I don't know if he's having router trouble again or whatnot, but I haven't been able to get a hold of him. So 
All right, let's start with William out of 10. How do you rate the Armageddon factor? The Armageddon factor, I rated a, a 8 out of 10. And the whole six stories of the key to time, I also rated an 8 out of 10. Okay. Neo. Oh, the Armageddon factor. Uh, every time I kept watching it, I kept going down and down. So Saving Grace was near the end. So I would have to give it a 7. It was a 6.5, but Tom and Mary Tam saved it and made it a 7. Okay, and if you had to give a rating for all the, the whole season, what would you give it? I would give it... I would actually give the rest of it. I would give it a 9, actually. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of nice, though, because this is your first time actually watching these. So it's kind of nice to hear you. You did enjoy the season and whatnot, being a first-time viewer. So, Okay, David Aston. Well, uh, seven and a half for this story on its own, Armageddon Factor. The season overall really should be a, a sign that the quality – of the show was starting to wane, I think. You know, no longer Hinkley for you know, the tight focus. Uh, and it was going from horror to just comedy. You know, we, we now have the arrival of what would become a bright pain in the ass in the 80s, brightly lit studios, you know, filming. So I'd say... Oh dear, how do you rate this? Uh, I'd give it 7 out of 10 for that whole season. Because some stories, I think it's fair to say, it is, it's kind of, I suppose, you know, eventually Doctor Who started thinking it could do no wrong. You know, it lost sight of its own standards. And that's kind of, when you start to shoot yourself in the foot. And like I say, this story in particular was an anticlimax, you know. Uh, there's no real ending to it. It's just literally one scene where Mary Tam doesn't get an exit, which she didn't want anyway. Uh, and then literally just goes into Destiny of the Daleks, which is such a loved story. And, uh, you know, not so great for the viewers, and, but perhaps great for Tom Baker because he, he got some after this. Uh, there you go. Okay. Callum? Yeah, I think I'll give it a, yeah, eight out of ten, and eight out of ten for the key to time overall, I think. Yeah. Okay. Philip? Uh, right then. Well, this story, it kind of dragged for me, and it, it, like I said earlier, it, 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 it kind of, I didn't enjoy it that much, so I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a five, really, to be honest, but overall, for the whole uh, season of The Keep to Time, um, one or two stories were a bit naff, like a, a re rebus operation, um, and also a little bit of crawl, that wasn't that good, so I'm going to give overall for The Keep Time, I'm going to give it a seven. Okay, uh, Texas Tim, are you back with the shit? Okay, we'll wait till he gets back. All right, uh, me. Some of you are gonna go, "Oh my god!" But Armageddon factor, six out of ten, man. It, it was just, it was way fair. too. Long. It's fair. It's fair. It's a fair. It, it's not bad, bad, but at the same time, it was a bit too long. There was too many things going on that were trying to cram into one story, and then yeah, it would have been far better as a four parter, four parter with some trimming. But the whole series as a whole, I'd have to give an eight and a half out of ten because. I can go back and watch this anytime and still enjoy episodes like Pirate Planet, um, especially, you know, Stones of Blood. Yeah, now you're back. Uh, give us your rating for the power, sorry, the uh, the Armageddon um, Factor and then Series 16 as a whole. Okay. Well, the, like I said, I think the episode itself isn't really bad. It is a little bit too long. It's interesting. This is the last six-parter that they did for the original series, although there was one more intended that they didn't get finished. But, uh uh, I would give I would give it a seven. It's an enjoyable story. It's 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 not really horrible. It's just uh, it's got some problems. I mean, I think uh, the dialogue's not too great in a lot of scenes, and uh, 
as far as the series as a whole, I think I think this season epitomizes the whole uh, Graham Williams approach to the show. And it, it's very well made for the most part with a much smaller budget than they were getting previously. And I think as a whole, it holds up pretty well as a six story story. I think that, I think um, that's it's 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 not a bad accomplishment. And I got to get up again. But uh, yeah, I, I'd rate the series as a whole. I'd give it a nine. All right. Okay. So uh, one last thing. Um, all right. By the way, I just popped up a screen, and they just told me yeah, Drax also featured in the novels uh, "Divided Divided Loyalties," which was a flashback to the first. Oh yeah. Movie. I forgot about that one. Yes, you're right. Yes. The Quantum Archangel. Which yep. Was an alternate timeline where he's working with the Master of the Rani and Mortimus, whoever that is. That's the Mentally Monk. And Search for the Doctor, which was a Choose Your Own Adventure style book by Dave Martin. That's the one I had as a kid. Yeah. So, yeah, he popped back up in books and all that. But, all right, if I remember correctly, and I was, I was going to finish off with this, if I remember right, somebody actually wound up with the actual key to time prop. Does anyone remember who that is? It was one of the big guys at Big Fin, uh, not I bet uh, the BBC. It was one of the, uh, I can't remember who it was, but I remember because I only remember it because as a joke, they were having a charity auction for doc for various Doctor Who props, and he was invited to it. And suddenly he looks up, and there's his key to time prop on the auction block. Is that Mark Gatiss then? It must have been. Uh, no, no, no. Gatiss wasn't. In, uh, no, no. This ain't Gatiss. Uh, or maybe it is. I'll have to look it up again because I, I remember yeah, it wound up in somebody's hand. The actual key to time prop still exists to this day. Um, it was made out of, uh, wait, I believe it was a hardcore plastic resin. And, yeah, he looks up, and there's his key to time prop, which is normally in a glass case locked in his office, going up for auction. And you should have seen the look on his face like, what? <laughs> wait a minute. Because there's only been one, you know, actual physical prop that joined together that was ever made, and he's got it. It's up there on the block. Oh, that was funny. Okay, so next week. Okay, on behalf of myself and the rest of the panel, everybody, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.